Hi, my name is Lysliner Inspires, and I am looking to change the narrative of what trauma and abuse looks like. From shame, silence, and stigma, to support and solutions. From hopelessness and rejection, to healing and recovery. How do I plan on doing that? By bringing awareness that the problem that goes with not talking about what you've been through, not addressing it, not only affects that individual, but it affects us as a community. It affects us as a society. Hey, 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 y'all. It's the Cider and Fires coming at you live with your Teach, Lead, and Heal weekly teaching series, Healing Soul Wound Podcast. Woo, woo, woo. Thank you guys for tuning in. I do not take your time lightly. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Like, what city, state, country, continent. You know, let me know. Because I want to know who is tuning in. Um, so let's get into it. Without further ado, let me introduce myself or reintroduce myself for those of you who may not have been around for a minute or for all my new listeners. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Have a seat. Grab you a pen and paper because I will be dropping some knowledge nuggets, baby. So my name is The Blood Sign and Inspires. I am an award-winning author. I am also a published author of five books. Five, yes. I'm also a workshop facilitator, expert speaker, and coach specializing in teaching others how to live beyond trauma and abuse and walk in their healing. And I'm also the owner and lead creative strategist for Rock Your Rebel Creative Consulting Company, where I help ministers and ministries alike with their goal of producing content that is the vision that amplifies or shows the vision that God has given them, whether it be creative content, creative designs, or creative strategies to hold you accountable. So that is who I am in a nutshell. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are in week two of Kicking Fear Out. Baby, kick fear out. Last week, we discussed, we talked about emotions are healthy, and how fear is not an emotion, but is a spirit that was not given to us by God. And if you want to catch up with that teaching, you can either go to my YouTube channel, Ellis Lana Inspires, or you can tune into my podcast, Healing Soul Wounds. You can listen to my podcast on Amazon Music, Apple, what else? Let me think. Spotify and Google Podcasts. Thank you so much for those who have already listened, who are giving me, providing such great feedback. I appreciate you guys. Um, So let's get into it. Let's get into it. This week, we're going to talk about living with that, with no limitations. This is something that this particular topic is near and dear to me because the Lord has really been showing me and teaching me how to live in him without the limitations. And one of the things I thought about as I was preparing this teaching is, you know, do you do like, have you ever wondered what life would be like if we didn't have limitations, if we didn't sometimes set certain things in place because of the what we've gone through, what we experienced? A lot of times, those of us who have gone through trauma and abuse, we think that we're putting in safeguards to protect ourselves from things happening to us. But what we're really doing is putting a barrier around us, around our lives, to not only keep us in, but keep things out that we need to be a part of. And so I'm on this this, this new journey of my healing journey, because there's levels to this. Healing is definitely a journey. It's not a one-stop shop. I'm on the part of my healing journey where I am learning to live in the wholeness and the freedom that the Lord has provided me with. Because if you've been in bondage and if you've been held captive by your trauma abuse for most of your life, it's like learning to walk all over again, right? Um, Imagine that, you know, you get into an accident and you have to go through physical therapy to learn how to walk. It can be challenging. You would think like, well, I knew how to walk before, but if you get into an accident that, that, that... either impairs your, your your thinking or impairs 
the the your ability to walk and to be to to be trained to rewalk again or to relearn how to walk, that can be grueling and 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 tiresome and it can be frustrating. And so the, this is the part of the journey that I am on where I am mm. learning how to walk and live in the wholeness that is part of my healing journey. And so I, am, I, I made a promise to myself and to God that I, as I start to learn things on, in, in every area of life when it comes to healing, I will be transparent and share and one of the things that i learned in this season is a limit about limitations you know i used to pride myself on thinking like yeah i'm like you know back back when i was like out there like i'm the wild one i'm the one that like i'm the wild car i'm you know the ones you don't know what to expect anything from but i wasn't really living life right i wasn't living life in of the freedom and boldness as i am now because there was always hidden um low self-esteem and, and certain things that I kept hidden, shame and certain things that were like just, just beneath the surface, but were, were hidden and I hid them well. And so now walking in this freedom of like, there's nothing that I hide. I'm who I am. You either like it, you love it, you don't, it's okay. I'm good with who I am. I don't need validation. And so that's a new level of freedom that I'm experiencing, but also learning how to really um relish and sit in a space of I am daddy's daughter like I am God's precious one and that is what the last year of my life has been just really learning how to embrace that it, it's been particularly hard for me because I grew up in an abusive home so I n- neither had a father in my home nor did I had a, have a mother that provided what I needed which is love, care, and all the motherly things, right? And so having to relearn or having to even be reintroduced, like what it is to be loved by a parent, to be cared for, and then furthermore by a parent that has created the whole world, like what? Like baby. And so I'm learning that that God is both my father and my mother, but it's, he is the one true living God of everything. He's created everything. And understanding what it feels like to be who he's called me to be and to trust him with every being of myself. That can be a little bit hard because I used to struggle with um, having control issues. Thank God I got delivered. So I wanted to share this with you because there is a, a, a life beyond trauma where you won't have you no limits. There's no limits in your thoughts, your action, or your beliefs. It is completely possible. And so, uh, first of all, let's talk about the definition of limitations. Limitations is a condition of limited ability, a defect, or failing. And so, in the, the definition itself says that we shouldn't be limited or bound by anything. From Echo, from stop. The Echo, itself, limit- stop. We shouldn't be limited or bound by anything. Part of our healing journey is a freedom of really enjoying life the way God has intended. Not through the lenses of what happened to you. Not through the lenses of pain or fear. But through renewed lenses of life is full and awaiting to be lived. And so one, I have just one scripture really for this particular teaching that says it all john 10 10 says the thief does not come except to steal and kill and to destroy i jesus have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly that's new king james version the new living translation says the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy my purpose jesus is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And so I thought about that, right? Because abundance, this is, I love this scripture because abundant, we talk about abundance. We talk about, we want an abundant life, abundant living. I hear that so often, right? But what does abundance mean? Because it's not necessarily how much money you have in your bank account, 
the type of car you drive, the clothing you wear. It's not, it's not all about that. And we you hear that talked about so much, but let's talk about what abundance is. Abundance is a plentifulness of the good things of life, prosperity, the state of condition of having a copious quantity of something, plentifulness. Copious means basically abundant in supply or quantity. The opposite of abundance is sparse or lack. So you have plentifulness of good things in life. When I think of good things, I think of the the non-tangible things. The peace of mind. If you have fear in your life, you don't necessarily have a peace of mind. Because fear brings along anxiety, panic attack, and stress, and worry. So there, there's no peace of mind. Joy. If you have fear in your life, you don't have joy because you're worrying and stressed about things, trying to figure it out. Those two things alone, peace and joy, when you have those two things, you have everything because you don't worry about what's going to happen. You don't worry about what tomorrow will bring. Because in, the, in the word of God, the Lord tells us, don't worry about what tomorrow will bring because tomorrow will take care of itself. Yes, you want to plan for the future, right? I'm not naive. You should plan. But you shouldn't worry. You make your plans known to God and you ask him, let, your, let thy will be done. Because God's will for our life is greater than any plan we could ever make. I'm just saying, you can hire the greatest strategist, but if it's going against what God wants, it won't work out. And I'm not wishing ill will, I'm stating faith facts. Faith facts. And so let's go a little bit deeper. I got time if you got time. Who is the thief, right? In the scripture, the word thief of you is used in both in both of the, 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 the scriptures, right? It says thief. A thief is an enemy, the devil. And he and one of the tactics he uses to steal your destiny and your abundant life is fear. There are people who have fear of the unknown. How can you fear something you know nothing about? How are you already stressed and worried about your future and you don't even know what like you just don't. You we know and what the word of God says with Jeremiah 29 11, where it says, We know the plans that God has for us, his plans of a, a future hope and prosperity. That says in his word, but we don't know, we don't always know the details. God doesn't always tell us the details. And that's where having faith comes in at. That's where trust comes in at, right? Because when you trust God, when you have faith, you know that He has your best interest at hand. Even if it don't work out the way you think it should, it's going to work out for your good because God said it in his words in Romans 8, 28. And so fear is also a tactic that's used to keep you in the same space that you're in. Bound, chained to your past, chained to your pain, chained to the trauma that happened. It's time to live beyond that trauma by kicking fear out. Fear will keep you reliving the traumatic experiences you've had over and over again in your mind. So much so is on replay. Every decision you make, you're comparing it to what happened before. How? Why? What was should not be what's going to happen again. Catch that if you caught it. And when you're replaying with the traumatic experiences that have happened before, it leaves no room for you to create new experiences outside of the trauma. That's what living beyond trauma is all about, to creating new experiences that are not connected to your pain, that are not connected to your past, that are not connected to shame. But in order to create new experiences, in order to live beyond your trauma, you have to start healing. And you have to kick fear out your life. Period. There's no place. One of the things I also want to address is that, and I've seen it going around a lot, and I used to be one of those people too that used this word very, just all the time. 
um, manifesting. I am manifesting my great life. Unless you are speaking the word of God, especially as a believer in Christ Jesus, unless you're speaking the word of God into your life and you're speaking what thus says the Lord by the Bible from what the Bible says, as like I, Romans 8, 28, certain scriptures, Romans 8, 28, Jeremiah 29, 11, this scripture, John 10, 10, the word of God brings life. Anything else outside of the word of God that you're speaking is death. And there's power and life. There's death, there's life and death in the tongue, and there's power. And I'm not saying I'm speaking death over you. I'm saying that what isn't alive is what's it's the opposite of what's alive. If it's not alive, then what is it? The word of God is living, the word of God is transformative. And so if you when we, we're talking about manifestation, if we're not saying I am speaking the word of God that it manifests in my life then all the affirmations the all the different things that you're you're saying i i am manifesting a car okay but are you you're going outside of the what god wants so then you're you're actually in error especially if you're a believer just saying putting it out there and so i want to encourage you try god try jesus try doing it his way yeah you might obtain some things you might even see some success temporarily but if you want longevity, if you want long life, if you want to really live beyond trauma, really kick fear out, not just deal with it on a surface level, but it's still laying dormant, wait, wait until it wears its ugly head because of what fear does, then it's time for you to start to, one, if you're not a believer in Christ Jesus, it's time to accept Christ into your life. Two, if you are believing in Christ Jesus, get to know him more develop continue to develop your own personal relationship with christ not your mama's relationship not your cousin not your church not your pastors but your own personal relationship with christ jesus and understand this having a rich and satisfying life means that it's full and it's fulfilled and you're content what does that mean exactly right because when you think about rich, we always think money, dollar signs, dividends. But when I think about rich and satisfying life, when, when it says in the word of God, John 10, 10, the New Living Translation version, I think of a fulfilling meal. You know, y'all know I love to eat, right? So I'm going to always give, I'm going to give somebody an analogy leading to food. But I think of a fulfilling meal, right? It has everything you need. And everything that you want, and it curbs your appetite, it stops you from being hungry, and then it supplies you with the nourishments you need. That is what a life living outside of your fear is like. You're full. You're content. You have no um, worries of stress because you're, you have the nourishment you need spiritually. And you're no longer lacking because you're filled with what you need. Doesn't that sound wonderful? I think so. And so when you kick fear out and when you have an understanding that mm -hmm. there's no limitations in your life, you can live a life beyond trauma without the limitations, you'll understand that there's nothing you can't do. There's nowhere you can't go. There's no one you cannot be. Because when you're not bound by fear, you can move freely in who God wants you to be, where he's called you to be, and what he's called you to do. And again, I say, kick the fear out because it's dead weight and it's holding you back. I want to leave you with three tips for today that will give you the courage to do what I know you can do and that's kick fear out one read the word of God for yourself I've given you a few scriptures that you can meditate on um I have a new saying now that reading the word of God daily is like taking your vitamins you need it it's a supplement that keeps you going even more it's like drinking water every day you can't go without water for too long so why are you going without reading the word of God 
I'm just saying. And you can start small. If you never picked up a Bible before, start with one scripture. Start with the one I gave you, John 10, 10. Start with that one and go from there. I guarantee you the word of God will, it's so transformative. You will not be the same. Just trust me on this. Okay. If you've been following me for a while, you have seen the change in me as well. Number two, study the word of God. Take that one scripture and just study it. One of the things that I am doing now is looking at the definition, the biblical definition of the words in certain scriptures to get more understanding. Study it. Take a, take a pen and paper, write it out, and break down the, the, the different words in that scripture and ask God to show you what this scripture means to you, what he wants it to mean to you. And last but not least, believe God at his word. God is not a man that will lie. So when God said he'll do something, when he said it is what it is, it is what it is, period, and amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know that your time is valuable. I won't take it. I don't take it lightly. Whether you're catching this live or the replay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, sharing is caring, so share it out, share it out, share it again. Have a blessed day, and remember to be bold, be unashamed be you and most importantly be healed peace out trauma and abuse affects everyone and we all have a part to play to change the narrative with love